This is Sun Valley, Idaho. Now, it's a place I'd not heard of from a riding perspective before, but that's absolutely to my loss. The road riding, admittedly, might not be off the charts, but venture off-road onto gravel and you'll be absolutely blown away. Oh, and yeah, I am, I am wearing a bum bag. Yeah, all will be revealed. The reason I'm here is because I've been asked to come and cover some super interesting bike tech that's been on display at Outerbike, which is actually nothing like the old trade show Interbike, not least because instead of Las Vegas, you get this. Now, you will see a few videos popping up on GCN Tech, diving into some of the highlights, but whilst here, it seemed rude not to go for a spin. Or rather, I begged to be let out. So I've very kindly been loaned a bike and kit so I could do just that. And it's for that reason that I'm riding the new gravel frame from Viathon, kitted out with the Rota 1x13 hydraulic group set and wearing showers pass clothing. There is more info on all of this over on the Tech channel as well. Other than the scenery and the trails, there is yet another reason to be very excited to ride here, and that is because one of the locals is none other than Rebecca Rush, ultra endurance athlete and adventurer. If you've only ever followed the road side of cycling before, you could be forgiven for not knowing who she is. So with the help of Wikipedia, let me fill you in on some of her exploits. She won Dirty Kanza XL last year, the normal Dirty Kanza, so just 200 miles, on three other occasions. She's a four-time winner at Leadville and a former course record holder, three-time world 24-hour solo mountain bike champion, as well as cross-country masters world champion. And then also like this, tucked in amongst them, two-time US national whitewater rafting champion. Oh, and she's also won an Emmy as well for her documentary, Blood Road. Rebecca, I'm hi. Rebecca. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Right? We should hug. I feel like oh. we should hug. Yeah, I'm stoked to show you around. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. Where are we heading today? We, I think, well, we got to get on some dirt. So yeah. I thought what we could do is take, go out the start of Rebecca's private Idaho course. So we'll get one of my favorite training hills is Trail Creek Hill, Trail Creek Summit. So cool. we'll do some of that and you get these killer views. And then I thought I might uh, take you on a little single track. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Does that sound good? Good stuff. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for the hug, by the way. That's so not British. It's like, oh, it's not? Okay. No, it's not at all. Okay. So it's, it's just a nice <laughs> treat, really. So yeah, thanks. Well, you're in America. Sun Valley, catch them, super friendly place. So it's good stuff. To have you here. Fantastic. Right, let's yeah. ride. Okay. You know, this is quite a momentous day for me, Rebecca. <laughs> to ride with me? No. Well, yeah. And yeah. also, because <laughs> it's 22 years since I last wore a bum bag. Oh, it looks good on you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, they're cool again, aren't they? Apparently. Well, where we're going, there's no cell phone, there's no bike shops, or no, so we're going on the wilderness. So maybe you need a bum I bag. I need a bum bag, for yeah, sure. exactly. All right, let's do it. Which way? <laughs> So a little Sun Valley history for you, which is really cool. Um, so you can, can you see those like wooden things on the hill up there? Yeah. So that, it was the original Sun Valley Ski Resort and those um, those pieces of wood and stuff, that was the first chairlift yeah. um, in North America. So, Idaho is your home state, right, Rebecca? Have you always lived here? No, I've been here like 15 years. I'm a Midwesterner from yeah. the flatlands, but when I learned to rock climb, I decided I had to go west. So ended up here, yeah. Okay, cool. And so you've always done, as far as I can tell, pretty much <laughs> ultra endurance, like sport, whether yeah. that's adventure racing or bike racing or... Yeah, I'm not a sprinter. You're probably finding out. Well, how did that come about? <laughs> if we go a few more hours, I'll like kick into gear. But I mean, even I was a runner in high school and even then it was like, I was better at cross country than track. And it's, it's always been the longer it is, the better I do. So right. it's just gravitated naturally to the ultra endurance. And now that ultra endurance is kind of sort of becoming more and more to the <laughs> fore of, of cycle sport and you've been there and you've done it all already, but how do you feel about the rest of the world kind of catching up almost with 
what you've been up to. Uh, it is kind of funny that people now are really wanting to adventure on their bike, whether it's gravel or bike packing. And I think it's amazing that people want to get off the beaten track and, and they want to go exploring. And I've wanted to do that even since I was a little kid. Like I would camp in our backyard and hang out outside. So, you know, I've always been doing this stuff, but yeah. I'm stoked that people want to see where their bike can take them, you know? Instead of just how fast can I go on my bike? Like, where can my bike take me? And are you just like, where have you guys been? Like, <laughs> come on, what took you so long to work this out? <laughs> you know, I, I've always just been an adventurer and kind of followed whether I was doing 24 hour racing or sage racing or now gravel and bike packing. It's always been just kind of what has moved me. And it's really cool to see other people not necessarily following in my wake. I didn't invent any of this stuff, but it's cool to see people figure out that there's so many ways to ride your bike. Yeah. And I love that the industry is getting towards exploring. It's quite an amazing spot though, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard when you're flying down to like not look at the scenery yeah. and to stay focused on the road. And so where's this road gonna take us eventually? This crosses the Pioneer Mountains and goes into the Copper Basin and it's one of the only east-west roads to cross this mountain range. That's actually, cool. that view up there by that rock is actually better than the view at the top. There are mountain lions here and moose are pretty aggressive. No. Yeah. Moose are really aggressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Now, agonizingly, this is going to be the high point of our ride today, isn't it? Because although you can see the road carries on, we haven't got the time to hit the summit because there is more dirt, single track, gravel calling down in the valley. So what am I missing out on, Rebecca? Well, it's we could go, but you're too tired. You yeah. said you want to turn around. Hey, shh. Right? <laughs> no, I mean, what goes up there, the top of Trail Creek Summit, it really just opens like this Pandora's box of gravel roads in the next valley, in the next valley, in the next valley. It's kind of endless. And like you're feeling right now, every ride I go on, I don't want to turn around because there's so much more. Yeah. But we've got single track, we've got a sweet descent and uh, roll back into town. Cool. So it just means you have to come back. Well, yeah, I think I will. This is a really cool access onto some sweet single track uh, oh, nice. that we can check out. Sweet. Or it's a lot longer, a lot harder than, you, than it looked like on the map. Yeah. So then you're out for, you went for a four hour ride and you're out for 10 hours. <laughs> and you're like, oh, <laughs> those are like bonus miles. <laughs> you must be pretty mentally strong though. Like, if I was supposed to be out for four hours and I ended up out for 10. I'd probably be like a gibbering wreck. Here we go, back where we started. Thank you very much, Rebecca. That was super cool. <laughs> a quick 40K of epic gravel, I think it's fair to say. 40K, well, you're in America, it's miles. Oh, but 25 it wasn't 40 miles. miles? 20, yeah, 26-ish. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. <laughs> that was fun, what'd you think? I think it's great, particularly that bit of single track. Yeah. Like, you know, I like gravel roads, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But for me, gravel bikes are great when you're riding stuff like that. Super smooth, twisty. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> um, what's coming next for you, Rebecca? What's Next, well, Rebecca's Private Idaho is end of August, early September. So where people could come and sample 
the very riding that we've done today, right? Yeah, we did part of the course, um, and there's 20, 50, 100, and the stage race. Nice. So kind of something for everyone. So that's a big deal. That's happening year number seven. Um, but for me, next is just some bike adventures. I've got some bike packing and some overnights planned in Idaho in my backyard. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> well, hey, please invite me back at some point. You this... might have to stay overnight. Like, we'll go a little longer than 40K. Yeah, yeah. Next oh, time. I feel like... Yeah. You might need a bigger bum bag. I could get a bigger bum bag, <laughs> I reckon. Yeah. You fit a sleeping bag in there? Not, not the kind of size sleeping bag that I need. I get very cold. <laughs> cool. Anyway, thanks, thanks for the again, ride. Rebecca. That was awesome. Yeah, super yeah. cool. <sighs> well, I couldn't let that one go. I couldn't get halfway up a climb and not see what the top was all about. So fortunately, as you can see, I've snuck out again. Ironically enough, the summit isn't actually as scenic as it is a mile down the trail. But anyway, the top is the top. There's no arguing with that. Right, if, as promised, if you want to see a little look at the bike that I'm riding, in particular this Rota 1x13 group set, then you can get through to a video on the tech channel now. And hey, maybe I will explain why I'm wearing a bum bag. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this all too brief taste of Idaho gravel. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and thank you very much to Rebecca for taking me on this ride.